So I finally realized I've been stuck in another form of decision paralysis, redesigning the same systems over and over, trying to find the best way to approach simulating food and cooking. But I need to get past that and actually finish this game. So I set myself a deadline, and in fact I've released two new prototypes since the last devlog. I'll talk a little bit about what's new, and some changes that I'm planning to how I do these videos. Let's start with the first prototype. The main change from the last devlog was redesigning how textures work once again. Right after my last video, I realized a critical flaw in my approach. If I take away the order of operations so you get the same texture no matter what order you do things in, I lose the predictability of a finite state machine with a few transitions at each step, because the last thing you do isn't necessarily the last transition that it's following. So my plan was to backtrack and say that order of operations does matter again, which means I need to redesign the notebook so that you can somehow specify the order of things to preview. But I ran out of time to do that before my self-imposed deadline. But I'm kind of glad I released the prototype as is because I learned a lot from early playtesting feedback, mostly from one person who sent me around an hour of gameplay footage in which I could see a lot of things that were unclear, and more importantly, what parts of the game were actually fun. The notebook and tastealizer were really crucial to that, I think. Hearing that the player thought about this like a puzzle game also really helped solidify the direction that I want to go. It was also interesting to see how the time limit induced an adrenaline rush, and I think that's a large part of why the player described the game as addictive. I think that's a really good sign that the gameplay formula is almost where it needs to be. I just need to do a bit more tweaking, add a lot more content, and of course add a lot of polish like sound effects, music, saving and loading, just a lot of things I need to make this game a complete package. But first I had some unfinished business with textures, because for one thing I got feedback that you needed to see how much of each texture was in the food for some of the challenges, but also I couldn't find a good way to specify an order of events for previewing reactions, and ultimately I decided to backtrack once again and decide that order shouldn't matter. I went through many different designs and finally landed on this one, but behind the scenes I completely revamped textures yet again. Instead of a finite state machine, I've settled on a 5x3 table based on two hidden attributes which I call strength and flux. These don't really make a lot of sense from a physics standpoint, but I figured using hidden variables like this would allow me to just add and subtract from them with each process so that order of events wouldn't matter and the changes could still be predictable because as those two hidden attributes gradually change, it would always move to adjacent or diagonal spots in the table. So the latest build has yet another complete revamp of how ingredients are generated and how reactions work. Part of that is to include a new hazard system, which I'll talk about in the future, and part of that is to make everything a lot more predictable, with the exception of exotic ingredients that I'll be adding soon. I've made a lot of changes to liquids as well. When you have multiple liquids in a container, they now mix homogeneously instead of being stratified. So if you were to extract some with the pipette, you get a little bit of every substance in the container. Liquids in bowls are now rendering properly, finally. And you can now actually use the blander and particulator on liquids, whereas previously they had no effect. I've revised a lot of the commentary so that disagreements make more sense and also to be more informative. For example, here it's telling me that there's raw meat and I should check my tasteizer for hazards. And then of course, this judge will complain that that meat is burnt. Now I didn't score very well because honestly I wasn't even trying, but if I skip ahead to the standing screen, another change is that you can actually see who's in last place even for non-elimination rounds. So that's pretty much all that's new aside from a lot of bug fixes and behind the scenes tweaks. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, you can go to patreon.com slash thoughtquake, but you don't need to be a patron to access these posts and download the game. This was just a convenient place to put my change logs, known issues, and other information about the builds. But that leads me to the other thing I want to talk about. I'm splitting my videos into two different types from here on, or at least experimentally. The first type are going to be devlogs like this, where I talk about the big picture stuff, what's new, game design decisions, and just overall progress. The second type of video will be more technical. I'll talk about how I solve specific problems and take a look at actual code in the game. Next time we'll be talking about how the ingredient generation currently works, but if there's anything else you want to know about in particular, let me know in the comments and I'll try to cover it. I'm not sure if that video will be next week or if I might take a week off because I've been kind of wanting a vacation. Either way, it really helps me out if you hit the like button, spread the word about this channel, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.